Hello! How is everyone? How did your reading go this week? Um, all right, more people are coming, more people are coming. Uh. Uh. <laughs> Woo! I'm good. I got back from, I was in Toronto for the weekend. I got back last night and I stayed up late. Yo, um, everyone saying that I didn't save the live, something messed up with Instagram, because I did save the live. Like, I did. So I don't know what happened last time. I'm sorry that that happened. I'll, I'll do my best for it not to happen again. But that was all, uh, that was Instagram. That wasn't me. Um, I got to chapter 10. I didn't read through chapter 10. So... So anyone that's a little behind, it's okay. I'm a little behind too. All good. Happy birthday, Maddie McCall. That's awesome. 22. Good year. Good year. Yankee's hat is somewhere in this apartment. Um, ooh, cool, cool, cool. Ah, oh, man. Okay. So, uh... You know, Instagram always messing with everything. I completely agree. So, so we're all close. Please come to Pandemonium Con too. If they invite me, I would love to be there. I have to be invited. Um, okay, we'll enjoy teaching. Thank you for stopping by. Uh, what else are we going to talk about today? Oh, let's talk about our new book, Into the Wild by John Krakauer. So what are, oh, uh, Christy Bentley. Into the Wild by John Krakauer. So, um, let's start as we always start. What are your first impressions, one word thoughts, just quick things. Boom, boom. Sounds like a good book. I'm, I'm enjoying it so far. Although I oscillate between thinking like McCandles is crazy or being like, does he get something that we don't get? You know, I, I, I go back and forth. Very intense book, yes. Harder to read, definitely different. Chris Alex, very charismatic. Um, I think it's interesting, weird, but the good kind. Okay, I'll take that. Saddening, hmm, I like that. A little bit lost in the beginning. In my mind, this book was an autobiography. Oh no, yeah. I think you want to hear the song in my mind. No, Alexa, I don't want to hear any songs. Alex is always listening. It's crazy. Um, he had the audacity to follow his dreams. It's like reading a documentary. Cool. Are you hearing this? Alexa! Stop! Why is she listening? Um, reading a documentary. Creative Cloud. And now I have to re-edit, re type everything from my script. Oh no, that's awful. Good luck. Uh, adore the writing, put me in the story. Interesting, hard to understand. Interesting, a little disappointed maybe because I saw the movie first, but I was not expecting to be told by other people. Interesting. Uh, skip the notes, Rita. Uh, enjoying it, don't want to think about it. Hard to understand for me. Okay, I'm sorry. Interesting yet depressing. Okay. Uh, should buy it so I can read it. Yeah. <laughs> I found it very easy to read. Awesome. Uh, It's surprising really like this book so far. The writing style is hard but understandable. The different stories and Amanda's experience is just so eye-opening. Um, I have some good questions we should all ask ourselves by the end of the live, so I'll be sure to ask those. Awesome, Carrie. Love that. Alexa, right? Alexa, stop listening. Oh, God, she's going to hear me again. Okay, we're good. You know, I think it's all the, all the, all the ideas we have. The FBI is listening to us as a book club. They're starting to tune in. I hope they're reading along. Um, inspiring, but also sad. Okay, so I've seen uh, inspiring, eye-opening. I've seen interesting. Now let's go into what inspires you about Alex Supertramp or Chris McCandles. What inspires you about this book? Um, what is interesting to you? What questions are you asking? Um, how, 
how do we feel about him? Also remember, this book is being told from the perspective of John Krakauer, who originally wrote, uh, who wrote one of the original articles about the discovery of Christmas candles. Um, and then upon doing the research for that article, he decided to write this book. So we're, writing, we're reading it from the perspective of this author who wants to find out more about this. We're kind of going with him on his journey to discover who Chris McCandles was. The main character looks a bit ungrateful. I can't feel bad for him. I don't think he wants us to feel bad for him. And that's something that I think is interesting. We, he, sees us, he feels bad for us because we live in this society and we abide to these rules and we, we allow things to be dictated for us in a way that he feels he doesn't because of his freedom that he's taken very aggressively, if you ask me. I love how determined Chris is. I don't think I could ever do it myself, but I respect for him. I agree. I think it's to boldly pursue a dream is very respectable and admirable clause, uh, okay, uh, admirable thing. Now, depending on the dream, I don't want to say like anyone pursuing the interesting people have an awful dream and then you're like, oh, I've supported them. I don't support that. I'm saying like the way in which he's pursuing his dream is definitely, imagine if we pursued our dreams with such vigor and such like, you know, it'd be crazy. Quite brave and intelligent. I wish he was more prepared for the journey. I wish he'd survived. Me too. Like the part where they said that he was thinking about writing a book. He was like, I wish we could read his book. Loves Adventures. Quite inspiring in the way of doing something just to do it and go for it. What do I do with my college application? <laughs> cool. I think it's sad he died when he seemed to have decided to join civilization again. I think Alex Chris wanted to die or like he wanted to live to the fullest outside common schemes, even if he had to die. He was set in his ideas, stubborn, ready to die for his freedom. Chris inspires me a lot. I think we've all had a moment like, let's go on an adventure, but do we? Do we really live the adventure? Or do we just want to take pictures and be comfortable in our comfort? Good questions. Uh, love Chris's compassion. Chris is a free spirit. I wish I could be more like him. I need to change in my life. I want his courage. He pushed himself to the limit. Respect him a lot. Love how he's such an educated man that is, that is said to not have much common sense. <laughs> Chris Alex, interesting character. Brave choice to leave everything. It's cool he didn't want anyone, but he had to leave a sign on everyone's... Mm. On the one hand, I like that he pursues his dream and doesn't let anyone stop him. On the other hand, I'm furious because he doesn't think enough ahead. I think you've been reading too much. You're looking really tired. I don't think I could do the same as Chris. It is inspiring, but at the same time, I can't help but think that was also a bit selfish, especially how it doesn't tell his family. What I like more of reading is that make a point of staying in touch with people he met. Okay, I think that's interesting too. Like, I don't think I stay in touch with people as well as he does. I do think he was selfish by not telling anyone he was going. His parents were worried sick. He didn't even dare write them. I think he was an inspiring young man who chased after his dream, but went about it under prayer. Okay, I wonder if he already knew he was going to die before starting this journey. Dude, if you can remind me to ask the questions I have at the book club test. <laughs> okay. Uh, doesn't keep in touch with them and at least tell them he's alive, but keep in touch with people we just met. Yeah, I think that's a little weird that he keeps in touch with these, this new family that, well, I think it's, then again, it's his choice to stay in touch with these people, to, to claim that they're a new family to him. He had no choice in his biological family. So to me, that makes sense. Like, not makes sense, but with what we learned about him, I, I understand that in, in a different, I, can, I see it. I don't think he was selfish. I think he lived his life trying to Please his family, but if you read Alex's personality, you can understand what was going on. You can understand that that was not the life he wanted to live. I read the quote from Paulo Coelho. It reminds me of those people who don't understand Chris's journey. Quote, 
Some people around you will not understand your journey. They don't need to. It's not for them. Well, my best friend from high school and I don't talk much if we see each other on the street. But to see him keep in contact with these different people is quite nice. Uh, Yeah, okay, okay. Maybe it was one path journey. Maybe he wanted to die and live the most. I don't know if he wanted to die. I don't think that was his plan. I mean, because I think he was trying to prove himself that he could live like that. He could live off the land. And I think, I think he was, I don't think he wanted to die. I don't think he did. Because I think that makes him look like a, like he wasn't prepared. Or like he couldn't do it. Like, it got the best of him. But then there's two sides to that coin. Like, he could say that that's what I wanted. I wanted to die in nature and do it like that. Or, or I wanted to say I was... Like, able to overcome it. Able to beat it. I don't know. I don't know. It's amazing how he's close with every anyone he met on his way. I appreciate that, honestly. He had issues with his family, but just let them know where he was. He's like two different people. I agree. He's like two different people. Um, yeah. So what do we think of this writing style so far? What do we think of this author? Do we like him? Get up here. Do we like him or what? Um, oh gosh, I fell behind. Okay. Please save this live. Can't list right now because I'm at work and I really don't want to miss this. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, I think this book in particular makes you wonder about your life choices. I think the author makes it wonder. Be brave enough to do it as well. Ooh. Good question. Remember that guy. Because we're going to ask that question later. He made so nothing can reach him. His death, maybe because of starving, was a torture, I bet. I don't think he planned that. I think he wasn't prepared as much. Some things he just tried. Look at the thing with his car, what happened. True. Movies protected is different than the book. Yeah, we'll talk about the movie at the end of the book. Um, I mean, he wasn't prepared. The people that met him wanted to give him advice and tell him that he needs this and that. It was hard and he refused. I think he's upset how confined he was in society. And I mean, even then, going back to the comment just above that, Delia, yeah, Anna Kat Fernandez's comment, that in society, older people are always telling people what to do. People are always trying to tell, in our society especially, they're always trying to tell people what to do and what's the best way to live. And, and I think he felt very constrained by that understanding and by that thing where he's like, wait, no, I'm a person. I should be able to choose my entirely, my own destiny. And how is it freedom if I have to have a license to hunt or, you know, all these other things that I think he was thinking. The character and the author. Do we like the character of the author? I do like this author. I was not expecting the movie written like this. I would agree. I would have liked the author to write more chronologically. I think I agree with you there, Paula. I think it might have been like an easier book to read if we charted his path and we did it like that. But I think a lot of this book, from the author's perspective, might be because of how he came upon information. And he's telling us these key choice things to show us different facets of Chris or Alex so that we can have like a, a very complete picture of him, I think. I like the way he's told it from several different points of view. I think it really gives you insight into Chris and why he decided to do what he decided to do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I like the writing style. I feel like he's truly telling a story. As for the author, I think that the fact that he seems to understand Chris underlies what motivates. Yes, I agree. Um, uh, oh, okay. Hi, Annie. Bye. Uh, I really like the way it's written. I like the way he describes nature and how chapters different aspects of Alex. I like the writing style. I can feel the author's...
Um, the author makes me want to go out and have a bit more adventure in my life, right? I think the author does a great job including different sources and points of view, even more when young people are like choosing your destiny. Exactly. I like the writing style, the fact that it uses different perspectives. Then I get a bit confused about the dates. Um, I love this author. His writing is full of details. When I read this book, I feel like I'm in the story. I have to agree. I, who said that it was like reading a documentary? The more... Oh, look at this little cute cat. Um, reading a documentary. The more I watch, the more I read, the more I feel that way. I completely agree. Um, I think he's a very compelling person to try to understand. In, in, in our world, I think when people actively push against, like go against the grain, it uh, fascinates us. Especially when it's someone that's like, there are a lot of modern day comforts that he, choose, that he chose to forego and to not have. Um, I always wonder that type of lifestyle, like where do people, how often do they shower? Where do they go to the bathroom? If he doesn't eat for days, what does he do? Like, there's a bunch of things that, that I don't know if I could do that, nor do I know if I want to commit to that type of lifestyle. But I think he's also making the thing that most people don't question. It. So I think it's fascinating that we get, because of this book and because of Alex, we get to question the lifestyle we live. Like, is this what I want to be doing? Because it can be done, technically, if you want to go run around and live out in the desert and live off the land and meet people and connect and do that. You can do it. Might not be as well accepted by your family or by society, but you can do it. So I think that's one thing that I'm getting from this book is like this idea of like questioning. Just like, am I living the life I want to live? And if not, how do I want to live and how do I start living that life? Oh God, I'm skipping a bunch of stuff. Sorry. I think he didn't shower. That's at the Boss McDonald's. Yeah. Um, see, and that's the thing. People will say Chris died stupidly. As he said, the author admits is one of the main uh, things he's getting from like the Alaskan people that he talks to. But... Ah, oh, bye, Stella. But I think, um, I think the author was trying to understand this. I think he, like us, admired this facet of Alex, this, uh, this idea that someone could just have all the comforts of life and be like, no, I'm going to choose to live in this way. I'm catching up on comments, guys. <laughs> I could never give up Starbucks. <laughs> yeah. Didn't almost forget that he was a real person because I find his point of view about the world so different. But I do respect his point of view and I respect his story. You know, it's interesting. Uh, I remember 2017, I packed up and went to Canada for two weeks, but it ended up not being for me, though I met people who I talked to. I kind of see myself in that part of him and getting up and going. Cool. Even with our Canadian winters, negative 30 years Celsius. Oh my gosh, I know. I was just in Toronto and it was like negative 15 Celsius. It was ridiculous. I couldn't imagine wanting to be in the wilderness in Alaska, in the cold, to live off the land. No, that's a whole other type of, like, challenge. Oh yeah, the Teen Choice board next to my TV. Uh...
<laughs> oh, that's funny, Athena. Oh, uh, that's funny. No, but I agree. Like, there are a lot of difficulties that he put himself through. I mean, also, did you guys, if we've read, we've all read, at least up to, cha- up to chapter 10, maybe not through it. They talk about the other people that McCandles kind of, not emulates, but reminds them of. The other wanderers who decided to go out into the bush or into the desert and try to make life for themselves. And then there was that one guy that we read about that wanted to live as though here in like the Neolithic period or the, you know, live as people did way back then. And he said, he he finds that it's too difficult for people to live like that now. Um, But he committed. And that's another thing, like they commit to this lifestyle. It's not like he started walking for 20 minutes and was like, okay, it's hot. I'm going to go back inside. I'll do this tomorrow. No, they committed to it. And then with every difficulty, it just became another obstacle on the way to their dream, not something for them to turn around which I think is pretty cool. When you think about it, Chris was so lucky about the people he met. They were all nice. Well, then again, like, remember the perspective we're hearing is from this author who is trying to, what's it called? Uh, trace his steps and go back and be like, okay, well, you met Chris and you met Chris. But he did mention that Chris started burying his money before he'd go into certain cities. Like he on the outskirts, so that he wouldn't get jumped by the people that sleep outside and have their own society. Um, so I think he maybe did encounter some bad, but I I like the idea that that's our our thought process and what we see from this book. Remember, it's not the full story, but we see that he what he encountered was overwhelmingly positive, friendly people, and I think one of the things that keep people safe is thinking of the world in a very dangerous way but at the same time it's not all bad you know <laughs> negative 30 I, uh, I'm, 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 I was really happy to be in Toronto it was amazing but I'm happy to be in warm LA at the same time. Happy to be back. Uh, the point is we can consider him a stupid for not taking the right precautions, but we can't make fun of him for living the life he wanted. You know, I don't know if he didn't take the right precautions. I think he chose to live a certain way. Like, I think that he was like, no, I only should need this much. I should only need this much. Like, all the other precautions are also from, like, modern day understanding. When he's like, reality, I could live here, I could, you know, he, he learned how to forage berries, the, he learned what food he could eat, like, he wasn't, a, he was a smart person in the sense that he did think about what, what the necessities were going to be. I just don't think he understood how brutal, I mean, nature could be. Uh... <laughs> oh gosh, I'm going to go back to the bottom again. Uh, the story is in April of 1992, so maybe it was easier to leave life even if I don't have people to do it. Well, April 1992, think about it. I was born the year after that, so this is before I was born. Uh, no internet. Like, it, it was a very, the technology was very limited then. Like, it wasn't, it wasn't at all what we have now. So, different times, different times. <laughs> Used to fly around in socks, so I bought two, now I'm flying socks. Uh, if it caused his death, not taking the right precautions, I don't think he should have considered that nature is not the friendliest. Yeah. The author sees Alex as a pilgrim, and his journeys reminded me of a friend who went the way of St. James to Santiago de Compostela. 
and Alaska seems like the destination of Alex's personal pilgrimage. Fascinating. You know, my brother actually did the whole way of St. James. He did that whole walk already, and so did my dad, actually. Um, well, Diego did the whole thing. My dad did, I think, like 14 days. But he vanished into the wild. Fascinating, right? All right, so that's about half the time we have. So we've talked about the book, what we think, how we find Alex a super interesting character. Now let's think of it in, in another context. Just because, like, we've been answering the question, like, would you do this? Could you do this? I feel like each and every one of us, should we be motivated in the proper way, could do this. But we have to be motivated in the proper way. Like, we have to want to do it. And that's the thing, he wanted to do this. Questions. What is your odyssey? What part of yourself do you see yourself in these adventures? And what part of them do you see in you? Hmm. I've never done a trip that's that spontaneous and unprepared. I don't think he was unprepared or spontaneous, but I think, like, I've never done a trip where I was like, oh, I'm going to show up here, and then I'm traveling for two weeks, and then I'll go home, and hopefully I go places. Most time, I, I like to have a little bit more of a schedule. Um, what is my odyssey? I would love to have a trip like that. What about you guys? Would you guys like to have a trip like that? I, I couldn't do it. I know it. And it's not about lack of technology, but more the idea of facing the unknown. Two, and there's no way out. I could, but I'm not sure I would. Well, I'm also, I'm not going to lie. One of the thoughts I had was Alex's privilege of being a dude. Like, he was able to travel a lot of the ways and places he was because of the inherent safety of being a white dude. I think that's something else that this book kind of made me realize. Because in other situations, I feel like some people would be in a lot more danger than he was, than he may have felt himself in. So I think an experience like that, like if you notice all the other examples they brought up, they're all men and they're all, like they're all dudes. So I think that's interesting. I know, I, when I travel now, I try to not use my phone as much. And that's something I want to be doing more. Using my phone less. Looking at it less. Diego's very good at that. Diego needs to teach us how to leave our phones alone. <laughs> I like the idea of seeing nature and meeting all the cool people he did meet, but... <laughs> how I feed myself is none of the government's business. Fuck their stupid rules. <laughs> Oh, read it. Good thing. Let's do quotes. Let's do quotes. I'm going to try to find one right now.
Yo, thank you, Rita. Letter to Ron in chapter six. That's what I was trying to find. All right, ready? Uh, so many people live with unhappy circumstances and yet will not take the initiative to change their situation because they are conditioned to a life of security, conformity, and conservatism, all of which may appear to give one peace of mind. But in reality, nothing is more damaging to the adventurous spirit within a man than a secure future. The basic core of a man's living spirit and his passion is his passion for adventure. Love that. Considering that I only spent a few hours in Alice's company, it amazes me how much I'm bothered by his death. Crazy how a few hours of someone can impact someone else so much. That's Thank you, Camille, because that's something I wanted you guys to take from that. I wanted you all to look at that one and be like, the people might not remember what you said or did, but they'll remember how you made them feel. And we have the ability to impact so many people in such a profound way in just a few moments like imagine that if you really took how seriously you could impact someone's life and you took it super seriously all the time you'd be i think you'd, we, i think we'd all be a lot more cautious about how we do that how we talk to people uh i wanted a moment i wanted a movement and not a calm course of existence i don't want to know what time it is i don't want to know what day it is or where i am none of that matters it's funny because like reading this book I, uh we like companionship companionship see but we can't stand around people very long so we go get ourselves lost come back for a while then get the hell out again <clears throat> my point of view is that you do not need me or anyone else around you to bring this kind of light in your life it is simply waiting out there for you to grasp it all all you have to do is reach it it's the experience, the memories, the great triumphant joy of living to the fullest extent. Before anything was expected of him, and now he's simultaneously out of Ron's life as well. Mm. It is the experiences, the memories, the great triumphant joy of living to the fullest extent in which the real meaning is found. God, it's great to be alive. Thank you. Thank you. My days were more exciting when I was penniless and had to forage around for my next meal. It is the experience, the memories of great Joker, uh, but it is not important. It is the okay. Everyone really liked that quote, all right. If you want to get more out of life, you must lose your inclination for monotonous security. So what are we, one of the reasons I wanted to read this book for this year, to start the year, is because I knew that Chris McCandles was dedicated to his way of life. I knew that we would learn things that I think are important to have brought to the front of your mind to think about for the new year. And one of those things is the idea that how much are we pushing away, pushing away being uncomfortable for the sake of security, rather than allow ourselves to be a little uncomfortable, and then the growth you might experience from that afterward would be exponential. I think I wanted to read this book because I wanted to remember that, 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 that adventurous spirit within, that this idea of pushing boundaries, uh, breaking comfort zones, and being wholeheartedly committed to your dream. You know? I'm the only one probably, but this quote made me reflect. I feel his gratitude for life and for the world. Right? I agree. Yeah, this live is going pretty quickly. It's okay to be comfortable. Yeah. I mean, I think that's the goal. Humanity is always trying to get comfortable, but... Yeah, don't settle. Don't settle. Um, I think I'll read this book again in a few years, maybe next year, the year after that. I want to know why? Because I want to look at my life the same way Chris looked at his. I want to read this book. I think this book made me understand how hard it is for me to go out of my comfort zone and how important it is learning to do that. He set pretty high standard for himself. 
Not a quote, but chapter 6, Chris talks about his fear of human intimacy, even in friendship and the emotional bags that comes with it. Kind of heartbreaking, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah, because I do... But I understand why he wanted to reject that. Because a lot of people say that when you find the right person, you'll suddenly discover this whole meaning or... Well, that may be true at some times. I think also, like, we never have to really look that far outside of ourselves to discover this new version. And we can always push ourselves there. We're the only ones who can decide things for us. You know? Like, they say you can bring a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. Like, other people can tell you things, show you things, teach you things, but the only way that's ever going to change your life is if you act upon it. You actually find the alchemist more uncom Okay, yeah, the alchemist is very dreamy, dreamy. You know, very much, like, spiritual. And this book feels more analytically that way. You know, Chris McCandles had studied, he'd read things, and he was living a very specific lifestyle in pursuit of this Alaskan wilderness. Whereas, in the alchemist, it was us hearing about this the shepherd, and he wasn't sure who he wanted to be, and he was allowing his belief in himself to push him forward, but... So yeah, like I think those books are similar but different. Interesting that you felt that way. I like that. Um, no longer would he answer to Chris McCann's Alexander Supertramp, Master of his Okay, has anyone else ever made like a... Like an alter ego name? Camille, very well put. I agree. The alchemist feels like a dream and into the wild, the reality of this journey. The audiobook I was listening to, the guy laughed at the way the sexual stuff was written. I just found it interesting. We missed the reading this one, but this discussion is everything. So nice to talk with other people that love books so much. Oh, thank you. Yeah, this has been fun. This, this, I mean, we only have 15 minutes left at this point. We might end early. Um, I think to me this book really spoke to me about connections to people, the wider world, but to yourself most of all. If you don't find your connection purpose, you'll never truly know the possibilities. And who knows, Chris McCandles, I remember at one point he talked about settling down, he was telling maybe this Alaska journey was going to be the last thing. Maybe he had to push himself to realize that he didn't need to push himself that far to discover something. I don't know. I think it is sad that he's no, no longer with us to tell us all these things he discovered. Juan Motz! What's up, brother? Um, Okay. The joy of life comes from our encounters with new experiences, and hence there's no greater joy than to have an endlessly changing horizon for each day to have a new and different sun. Guys, I, I will try to save this live. It wasn't like, I don't know what happened last time. I think Instagram kind of messed up. I will do my best. So far, Chris has taught me to push myself, take more risks. He's shown me that he's grown as a person by doing that, so I think we all could. I agree. <laughs> no, you don't have to have an alter ego. I'm saying, like, I've known people to do that. Like, I had a friend who had an alter ego that really allowed him to write the music he wanted to write and to take on... Like, he would enter, he would dress a certain way, and he'd be like, tonight I'm going out as my alter ego. And he would go to a bar and behave in a way that his alter ego freed him from his former, from his other self, you know, from the society self. That, like, this version of him was like his artist self, and it had no inhibitions, and lived in the moment. And, and that separation allowed him to have that freedom. I don't think we need that. 
And that's why I think it's interesting. Yeah, like a nickname, except for for Chris McCandles, Alexander Supertramp wasn't his nickname. It was his new identity as this traveler. And I think people have that sometimes when they, they need help. Like, not need help, like when you can... It, it, it frees you from this other person, you know? I think that's what it is. <laughs> well, I think he did fear taking all those risks. 12 and 3, I, I just think he thought the fear was worth the reward. Stop blowing up my spot, bro. No, bro. Come to LA. Uh, I think in a way the reason social media is so big is that many people have the same fear of intimacy. You can be part of the real world but still be removed. I agree. I think it allows it allows this connection up to a certain point, but then I agree that it does allow this false intimacy. Although I don't know how false I feel like intimacy. I don't, I don't know. It's interesting. It's an interesting f question to ask. <laughs> Do I have an alter ego? No. I like to think that there's just me. And then I guess my alter egos become the characters I play. <laughs> but... Well, I think reading has helped me redefine myself. Like, I think that's why I like reading so much, because it allows me this... For a few hours, I can be Chris McCandles and try to understand him. And then I get to come back and be me in my couch with Stella. And then I get to read and be one of the people in these books, you know. I mean, you get to be Star Carter. And then you get to be <laughs> Eric Greitens, the former Navy SEAL governor of, Missis of Missouri. You get to be, I mean, there, there's so many. That's why I think I like books. Because you do get, I think you get that escape. What did we say we were reading next? The Song of Solomon? Song of Solomon? Okay. All right. You know what, Rita? That's a great question, everyone. We will talk about the rest of the book for a little bit. Right now, Oscar noms. We're gonna give. We're gonna devote five to ten, five minutes to the Oscar nominations. What do you guys think? How do you feel? I've seen almost everything except I haven't seen Green Book and I haven't seen Vice, which did really well on noms. So I have to catch up. Actually, I want to show you guys. So because I'm a SAG member, <laughs> I got all of my. Look at that. I've got all of the, uh, the screeners. Isn't that cool? Ooh, great movie. Great movie. Great movie. Cool show. I have to finish it. I haven't seen it. Ooh, I, don't, I haven't watched Glow either. Sorry, Glow. What's down here? Okay, that's everything. Isn't that sick? Isn't that cool? But I don't have, like, I got Vice, but I don't want to watch anything that was supposed to be seen in a movie theater on my TV. I want to go see it in a movie theater. So I think I'm going to try to go see Vice today, and I'm going to try to see The Green Book probably tomorrow. Ooh, okay. About Guy, I would agree with you. Rami Malek, does, I think Rami Malek deserves to win, too. I thought it was incredible. But Willem Dafoe got the nom for Van Gogh. And he was incredible. Roma? I need to see Roma too. Sorry, those are the three. Those are the three. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Black Klansman and Black Panther. I thought that was dope. Uh, Black Klansman, I really, I love Adam Driver. Love Adam Driver. 
Um, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, which was a dope movie. So, like, I don't, if you haven't seen it yet, guys, you should check it out. Because it was... I thoroughly enjoyed it. I went and saw it by myself one day. I was just like, I'm going to go to the movies at, like, 2 in the afternoon. It was great. <laughs> Quiet Place and Beautiful Boy weren't... I know! Like... I was disappointed that Steve Carell wasn't nominated for Beautiful Boy. I'm not saying anyone else didn't deserve it. I thought they all were fantastic. It was one of my favorite films this year. But I thought Steve Carell did such an incredible job. Aquaman I thought was really interesting. What do you guys think of Aquaman? I thought it was, gr I, I love Jason Momoa. I thought he created an awesome dude that I'm like really excited to see more of and I'm, I want to see more of like Atlantis. Some of the writing I thought was interesting. Like I thought the movie was great. I thought it was one of the, like I agree with a lot, all of the buzz it's getting. But I was like, there's something that I wanted more of. I don't know what it was, but I loved it. Uh, Walter Mitty the other day, isn't it so good? Uh, I need to see Roma. Subject Spider-Man, I love the way Miles takes a leap of faith. That's that's relevant. Thank you so much, Tish Skywalker. You get the gold star today. Absolutely. That leap of faith, that, that deep belief in yourself. I recently spoke at um, a high school in South Florida when I was there around uh, right after New Year's. And because I went to Catholic school my whole life, they asked me what my how my faith helped me in my career or how it has helped me in the past and I decided to talk about how now I don't know if I'm uh, as, we're not going to get into my religious beliefs right now but we'll talk about how Catholicism has this idea that the Holy Spirit is in each person right which means that God is in each person which when Jesus I think preaches that like I am in each of you you are each of me like we could all be that great and I think that's something that it kind of helps with, is that leap of faith, that absolute belief in yourself. Back full circle, sorry. A long way to get there. <laughs> Ooh, that movie's great. Eternal Sunshine. I'm trying to think if you like movies like that. Um... When I think of Eternal Sunshine, I think of this one really weird, not weird, it was this, I remember watching, it was a strange movie with Philip Seymour Hoffman called uh, Schenectady, New York, I think. I don't know, that movie, I've seen it a few times now, and every time I watch it, it's different to me, and I, I don't know if I'm there yet with it, but it's interesting. Glass, I have to see Glass. <laughs> But yeah, so that's our Oscars talk. I'm excited. Uh, Regina King for If Beale Street. Oh, you guys, If Beale Street was an amazing film as well. Loved it. Um, Oh, if you wrote an article about Rosanna Reads, uh, send it to uh, Twitter. Send it to me on Twitter. I'll like, check it out. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go see Vice tonight for sure. Like, that's going to be my plan. All right, guys. We are about five minutes from wrapping up-ish. So let's talk about the reading for next week. Since many of us got to Chapter 10 but didn't get to read much farther... Oh, wait, hold on. Finish it. Finish the book. We're at page 100. There's only 100 pages left, and then there's the afterword. We're going to finish the book. Um, 
I will give you the date that we will have Rosende Reads. It might be Tuesday again next week. I'm sorry we're back on Tuesdays. I want to stay on Sundays. Sorry. But let's finish the book, and then we will talk either Sunday or Monday or Tuesday again. I will post about that when we're going to talk again soon. It will be this coming, it'll be in a week, like our normal lives. But let's finish this book. Let's get through it because it's pretty awesome. And then next live, I will have a couple more books for us to add to the list. Um, one of them is a book that I saw on uh, Obama's list of favorite books he read last year that I had been thinking about putting on our list. And I saw it on Obama's book list. So I was like, done. Um, another book. I'm going to look at it. No, that's it for now. But uh, And I have a couple other ideas. But So next week, I will put out more books for the list so that we're not too far behind, so that people can have time to get the books, since we are no longer providing or agreeing or condoning PDFs. If you do it yourself, if you look up online, I can't stop you from doing that, but I do not advise doing things uh, illegally. Um, so, yes, we will... Uh, I will... So just the rundown, finish the book for the next time we speak. I will um, have the next books for us to read after this. Expect an Isabel Allende book. Maybe Love in the Time of Cholera. I don't know. I'm thinking still. I still have a bunch of plans. So expect a couple new books next time we speak. Finish the book next time we speak. Thank you guys for everything. Today was an awesome live. Um, I'm glad we're all enjoying this book. I'm glad, if anything, we're asking cool questions. Remember, continue to question everything. Uh, continue to be curious. Continue to explore. Continue to grow. Continue to read. And continue to be positive forces of change in your environment, in your community, in your world. Um, have a great week, guys. Remember, this is a new week, so get at it. It's Tuesday. It's not Monday anymore, so you should have a little more energy. Those Monday blues are gone. I know last night when I got back from the airport at like 11 p.m., I went to the gym because that's this year. We got a new year. We got, to, we got to attack it. Love Oreos. Got to attack it. I will see you guys next week. We will talk. Have a great week. Um, goodbye from Stella. <laughs> goodbye, guys. Talk to you next time.